G'day my friends, Marty Ware here from Marty's Garden. Look, we're on a little bit late, sorry to say. Just had some problems in the background with this software. Uh, I was running it, I was thinking, where is everyone? No one's turning up and oh, just a new one I'm using called StreamYard and uh, just trialling that. We'll probably go back to the Ecamm Live. But anyway, the show is pretty awesome today and what we're talking about is worm farming on a comeback? Is it on a trend? Has it ever been on a trend? Did it ever really die because you know that was the last video that we we're talking about and i'm going to talk about what i feel about that and ask you guys what you think hey and if you want to leave a super chat down below it's just below the comments box there anything is extremely appreciated for a chat or a sticker to help support the channel uh trying to bring marty's garden into a comeback i had a bit of a break from uh being not so well for quite some time but Feel, starting to feel much better and be interesting to see the direction of where Marty's Garden, where this channel goes uh, into the future. So thank you so much for being here. It was really weird when I was running it before going, why isn't anyone turning up? <laughs> and there's always people on the show and, uh, yeah, there was no one, there, no one there. But we're here now. I got the software sorted out and you, your patience. Thank you very much. G'day, LP. On the rocks and sail on the soil, Michael Gadbold. G'day, mate. And cool climate, tropical fruits. G'day, mate. Hey, thanks for coming. Really do appreciate you. And yeah, it's just awesome to see uh, some people here. Got filled up my little pop top, and I got some water ready to go. And we're shooting a live show. And we're talking about is worm farming on a comeback? Has it ever been on a trend? Is it trending now? Will it trend again into the future? Or did it ever really die? And that was, you know, like what we are talking about last time in the last show. And so many good comments come through and questions, and it really got me thinking I need to do an update, like a second live show for people who are going to watch the rerun as well. So, look, guys, if you're watching the rerun, leave these comments down below because it's going to be really cool for the people to read. We want to find out what you guys think about the future of worm farming because last time when we spoke, uh, as I said, we got some really great questions and answers. And I feel that worm farming, the future of it is really your future, what you think and feel about it, how you want to treat it, how you want to be involved, in it, how how do you use it? Is it, you know, getting are you getting a lot of benefits from it? And the more that you do use it, it's harder to sort of go away from it because you just see more great benefits from it and you just see how unreal plants are. Like I've got my biggest worm farms ever outside. I've got the compost running out and I've planted all around them. And, man, things are just growing like crazy here. We've got this La Nina, so we're getting a lot of rain and sunshine and rain, sunshine and rain. And, man, I've got basil leaves the size of dinosaur hands um, and I'm picking a big bowl of cherry tomatoes every day from one plant. So it just goes to show works really really awesome and it really does come down to how you think and feel about it and what you're using it for some people might be using it for a small farm other people are using it to uh fertilize their plants just on little balconies and things other people are using it on a larger scale to create compost like myself which i sell here from marty's garden there's, there's a worm casting there's a potted mix uh, for garden soils and things and occasionally I sell the worms as well I even sell worms for people for their lizards and fish and stuff like that sometimes so it does have a lot of diversity and it really does grow a lot of plants so I think as far as whether it's on a comeback or not this is a a, a big question to ask because when you look at Google Trends, it's been on sort of this plateau, but it's slowly going down, and it's quite disheartening around 2014. I think there's a big spike there. And what we're looking at, because the media is just smashing everything about, you know, like, <laughs> you know, we won't mention what, the, what it was and what it is and what's still going there, but nothing's being talked about other than fossil fuels and, you know, like the sort of the electronic re revolution and then you know like that's it and sort of you know it looks like sustainability in some ways is sort of being pushed out to the the sideline and you're seeing all these other problems like with plastics and things and stuff and everything that's still going on you think that uh people would get more involved and we get more progressive so hopefully some councils and stuff take it on the future and then just does start growing 
Now, the future that I see for it, for the comeback is, is in, uh, you know, sustainable agriculture and the, the where they're basically they're legalising marijuana and where also it's becoming, they're legalising it also for medical use because the leaves have a lot of carbon in them, right? And if you're feeding them organically and they, you're not using the leaves like to make the medicine with, you're just using, they're just using the flowers, then uh, those leaves are just absolutely fantastic for recycling back into the system you get your cost down so low and i just think that's absolutely fantastic now i'd love to hear what you guys think about the future of worm farming like i last time we're talking about is it dying it's obviously not dying it's still alive because there's heaps of enthusiasts out there we had 745 people watch that video um just on reruns i think it was about 100 or 200 when by the time i finished watching and um so yeah another 500 in the week uh, checking that out so it goes to show that there's some interest you know we're not talking millions like we probably should be but um yeah that'd be cool <laughs> but realistically um we're looking at it on a world point of view and um you know like the the top channels get you know 1200 something like that and i do you know like a, a youtube a worm farming video in a week and maybe 700 views or something so it goes to show it's not hugely popular if we're looking at it on a worldwide thing but the people that do it absolutely love it and some people come in and just use it they learn watch some of the videos join one of my you know the membership area do the little course there and then bang they're up and running and you know getting everything they need to start their own garden using worm farming and then just disappear and do their own thing, which is uh, fair enough. But anyway, Dad's Amazing Adventures just dropped in. By the wish you, Marty and Karen, a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Keep up the good work. Sorry to interject. No, any time. Thank you so much for dropping in and saying hello. And I wish you and your family all the best and everyone here into Christmas. But we'll do, you know, a closer to Christmas live show for sure. Hey, Marty, cheers from Queensland. Barry Watlow. Yeah, g'day, Barry. Nice to see you here. So start feeding them in, guys. What do you think about worm farming? Is it on a comeback? Is it something that you've been up and down with in your life or has it been steady for you in your life? Do you feel like you're scaling up or you're scaling down or you're moving away from it or moving more forward to it? Love to hear that and um, we'll if I can drag them across into the – Think, oh, there we go. I've got this software across now. So let's do this. We'll go right back to the beginning here and bring everyone across. LP. Yep. On the rocks. Cool climate, tropical fruits. If you're into that type of thing, go check it out. There's a cool channel there and teaching you all about and, and follow the stories of growing tropical fruits in a cool climate down in uh, sunny Canberra. <laughs> Dad's Amazing Adventures. Another cool channel you want to go check out some music and some really cool mellow stuff. It's really great. Barry Waller, my friend from up north. And again, mine is always slowly expanding from cool climate. Yeah, because like basically, you know, like if your worms are really healthy and happy, they breed, they lay cocoons, they're getting bigger. They like a worm can live for around about five years, they reckon. So they can drop a lot of cocoons in that time and you can keep expanding out. So if you are interested in scaling up, you can very much do it quite well once you've got your systems put in place. And uh, once you have them, um, they're, they're just around forever. So let's see what we got here. This is working pretty good uh, for the stream yard. I'm quite liking this plant. Indigenous Truth, thanks for covering this topic. Cheers from TX. You're very welcome. And thanks for coming to uh, watch the show. Always great to have everyone here. Michael Sharp, I try raising worms, not going as well as I wish. Uh, just keep it up, mate. Um, just keep sticking with it. You know, just think, you know, get your temperatures right, get your bedding moisture right. Not too dry is generally the opposite. You can sort of go out wet. It's generally better than going too dry. And, you know, don't overfeed and just get your feedings right and oxygen flow. And watch out for compression in your bedding as well. If it gets too compressed, you know, you really want to have a nice blocky, fluffy structure that they can move through and a few layers. And think about the forest, how things sort of layer and fall on top of each other so they can sort of crawl in and out. And, and uh, yeah, you'll find that you'll be you'll do pretty fine. If you've got a small worm farm, you should have trouble with that. Just check out the join button. 
uh, with the membership area. There's a full course there on how to do it. They're only, you know, like five minute videos, lots of them. And it helps you solve a lot of problems and just learn real quickly how to roll again. It's like winter again here at the moment. Yeah, you had that big low pressure system come through, moving out, and that's what's going to create the waves for me today or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I can imagine it'd be cool down there. So Fitz, hey Marty. <laughs> G'day, so yeah, so look, thanks everyone for coming. And if you are going away, you're not going to be watching uh, any of my shows in the near future around Christmas time. Merry Christmas and happy new year to you, to you, yeah. And I uh, would have got Karen to sing Merry Christmas if she was younger, but, you know, 15-year-olds. They just don't do that stuff anymore. They're just like, no, thanks, Dad. Oh, you want to come on the show five minutes? No, thanks, Dad. How about we? they ask you some worm farming questions, what you think about worm farming now that you're older? No, thanks, Dad. <laughs> I tried. I really did try to get her onto the show because some people have been watching this, like, forever and seen her when she was a little kid and she used to sing songs and all types of stuff really really cool now as far as trending goes with worm farming right i think if we look back in the google trends if someone wants to go in there and have a look and type in the search google trend search and get back to me when the last time it was at its highest trend or if it's falling or rising please go and have a look now and get back to me or let me know in the comments box down below i consistently look in there from time to time i haven't had a look uh, for a while so Google Trends, just type in worm farming and look under the, the tab search. 18 Bs, afternoon, everybody. Wonderful to see you here. And, mate, this guy, if you're interested in bees, awesome show. Totally awesome, like in the hives, like but in like in the logs, right? It's really, really cool. And I think we should actually get my friend on to a live show. Would you be up for that, my friend, if I can get you in, if I buy some more software again and we do some interviews? Would love to have you on the show and uh, and see how things go. And, yeah, actually, we've got um, a share link here right now and I could possibly drop it in the comments and someone could come on the show if they wanted to just for a bit of fun, or if you've got something that you feel you would like to share. That could be really cool. She's shy, doesn't know us. Yeah, I guess that, you know, that's partly it, and it's not as cool anymore. Um, she's always been shy, but she didn't mind being sort of like in front of the camera and stuff before, but, yeah, just not interested anymore, so I, I don't push it, right? Uh, cool climate tropic. I'm planning to get some beehives soon. Yeah, cool. We'll have a chat with 18 bees. He does like little, these really like logs and sort of like what these like wild hives and things. And it just it's just amazing. It just blows me out. And it looks like nah, because <laughs> golf. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So right. So I'm interested more on what you think about it. Like. If you were to count, if you had a number of how many worms you think you've got in your farms and say if you've just got one farm, two farms, three farms, how many would you have now at the moment if you were going to have a guesstimate? If I was going to have a guesstimate, I reckon I'd have about 250,000 would be my guess uh, in the big worm farms and then through the windrows, but anywhere from 150 to 250,000, I reckon. Um, but you know, that's just having a having a good guess. Uh, it's, it's a hard one to know because you never maybe a lot of people haven't seen what ten thousand worms look like. But generally, if you ball about that big, would be about ten thousand worms. If you're sort of like a, a small half size soccer ball or something like that, if you pound it all together, here's a good. Here we go, Chris Thomas. I work as a zookeeper here in Arizona. And I feel there has become a greater interest in the sustainability in our industry and the community around us. Worms are definitely a big player in our food future. Yeah, I never thought about that for zoos. I know, like, people do feed them to the fish and to reptiles and all that type of stuff. And being in the zoo, you've got this ultimate form of just manure all the time, right? So you'd just be picking it up all the time and then you just be composting it and feeding yeah. it back to uh, to the to compost worms. And I could see, and then they just thrive on that like no tomorrow. 
and you'd be, be producing the best fertilizers for all the gardens and plants and everything around in the zoo uh no costs going out and then you're getting free food for a lot of the animals so never thought of that and thanks so much chris thompson thomas for sharing that is just way cool and yeah we're going to give that a double barrel thumbs up that one everyone give that a thumbs up if you haven't thumbs up yet already and uh let us know what you think and feel about that comment uh, i'd love to know more what you think and maybe you've got some ideas for chris at the zoo or he i was i work as a zookeeper so he's still there in arizona and maybe we can help uh push some ideas uh, that way really really cool here we go dang that's awesome mate <laughs> what happened the 250 000, something like that yeah oh i just would have lost count by now wow that's really interesting to hear i i believe so too and, and that's the first that i've ever heard of that and we've never thought of it and i think you could almost yeah you could someone could go in to these zoos and teach them about worm farming and help them cut a lot of costs and save a lot of money and also, you know, like when people are coming in and visiting and things, they're creating all this like rubbish and mess and stuff. A lot of that could be composted as well and put through into the worm systems. So we've got a double thumbs up from Cool Climate Tropical Fruits. And here we have the thumbs up again from Indigenous Truth. I think it's just really awesome. And it's great for everyone to be here. And as I said at the beginning of the show, I was sort of talking around and thinking, oh, where is everyone? <laughs> but we got it going. And it's coming like, I thought no one was showing up. So, uh, yeah, stoked to be here. But I think I will go back to the other software if I can't get this one run running properly. Now, as I said before, I do have an invite link here. If someone would like to come on the show and you just need a phone, I want to be able to click on that link. And I think you go into a back end and then I would just bring you forward, put you side by side. But yeah, if you'd like to do that, feel free and uh, be happy to uh, have you on and have a bit of a chat. Uh, it's not as confronting or as scary as you think usually. <laughs> anyway, plain Indigenous truth. Chris Thomas again. I have a garden I built for the reptiles I work with and vermicasting has been a big deal for me. I enjoy taking care of my worms more than my crocs and my tortoises do the tortoises like eating them this is the the thing right now like and how many would a tortoise eat in a day like that's really interesting i'd like to know sort of like if you've got any idea of the numbers or the square meter size of the farms or how much area you're using what types of farms you are using that'd be really cool to know chris thomas just a bit more information um i think people would love to hear about that and look man i don't know you might be a bit shy but be great to have someone like you on the show because that is something I have never heard of before. Just absolutely think it's great. Barry Wattler, 30 or 40,000 at the community garden. So we have three sub pods and six tumbleweed farms. Yeah, okay. So you could look at anywhere from a few thousand into each one, you know, you know, so a few thousand in each tier. So yeah, you could easily have that that number. Well, well done. Um, I'm sure they're chewing through a lot of material. Uh, having that many now, Barry, and uh, you got a good job on your hands uh, keeping up with all of them as well, keeping them well fed and the expansion of them. So hopefully now the community garden you're able to, once you get to a certain level, able to release some into the garden more and also be able to hand some on to some, some local people to start up their little worm farms at home maybe. Um, that would be really cool. Okay, Chris Thomas, I live near Portland, Oregon Zoo. I'll ask them about this. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, good idea. Uh, I think that's it's something that we need to push out there and could make a really big difference in many places. So, uh, yes, thanks again, Chris Thomas, for sharing that. And we've got the thumbs up with the strawberries and <laughs> emojis and things. That is funny. Uh, LP, Marty, I came over as soon as I got your notification, so I thought you had just started. Ah, uh, wonderful. Well, um, yeah, I was just having some problems with the live, but it was, it was saying it was coming on at 9 a.m. Australian time, and I end up starting about 9.15. But anyway, we're here now, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. LP, my partner has box turtles, and I give him worms for them. Now they exist in the terrarium on their own as he buries food for them. Wow. 
So he gets the worm, buries it underneath, and then they live in there. And if they're breeding, he's figured it out to make his own worm farm in the terrarium. Is that what we're saying, LP? <laughs> More information, please. Oh, I think that's really awesome how nature works. I'm just going to read that out again. My partner has box turtles and I give him worms for them. So what is a box turtle for starters? And now they exist in the terrarium on their own as he buries food for them. Very interesting. More information if you have it there, please, LP. Love to know more. Chris Thomas, that is so encouraging. And I do wonder what other zoos might get on board with that. Uh, look, they may already be doing it. Um, and we just don't know about it. It's first I've ever heard of it. So very, very cool. On the rocks, in the soil. Great info, LP. I agree. I agree. Great info. So if you're watching the show and you're watching the rerun, please like if, interact like you do on the live show. It'd be great to hear what you think, feel about it. And, you know, anything about the zoos, turtles, feeding them, you know, animals feeding it. I think that's a really good piece of content. Now, I'm nowhere near an expert about that type of thing. I can breed them and farm them and just like you guys, but then knowing how to feed them, what to feed them, when to feed them, who to feed them to, um, that's a whole different game. And I think it would make a really interesting show, to tell you the truth, if you get someone who had that information. Chris Thomas, the only worms I have at the moment are from my personal bins at home. I'm working on making some bins at work at the moment. We have a few turtles that would eat some worms here and there. Okay, cool. Nice one. So I know the lizards like them. Uh, I've got a guy that has, and it's a guy who breeds um, budgies, and he's got some diff some finches, I think, and some other uh, ones that run along the ground, quail, and he, they, they're like the I think Japanese quail. They're the ones that they sell to uh, restaurants and that instead of like people eating to, in chicken and quail they're the japanese ones i believe and he feeds them them uh so he comes and picks them up for me but i'm wondering if the quail would be smart enough to bury them and let them breed in there i think they just eat them nice and quickly <laughs> lp yes exactly it's a native land turtle in michigan he rescued them whatever worms they didn't eat went into the bedding where they feed and breed. The turtles dig them up and eat them. It's, I just think that's just absolutely just wonderful. And being a land turtle, that's why I was a bit confused about the terrarium, like how wet it was or whatever. But yeah, if there's right moisture and they're, you know, they're manuring and things and there's food in there for the worms, I think that's just a, such a good idea. On the rocks and in the soil. My sister has a small farm and I gave her worms to put in her animal waste pile. She was stunned by the progress that worms make in the pile yeah well if you've got the right it's not too hot it's not too cold and it's got the right moisture um yeah for sure they'll you know as soon as they've got the right environment start breeding like anywhere from you know three cocoons a day with one one worm just you know how many worms in a cocoon can really sort of take off and be quite dynamic actually uh Remember, they are at the bottom of the food chain, right? So they need to breed and feed and move quickly to keep producing and need to try and produce more than what they're getting eaten. So um, that's the concept of the compost worm, you know, bottom, that are right at the end of the food chain, the poor buggers. Chris Thomas, I wonder if maintaining a worm farm would, wouldn't be an awesome exhibit for children as well as adults. If you can see the food waste and either paper, products being composted yeah i think if you sort of had like a dark area at one end and a lighter area at the other so they can move it down to the dark if they want to be and then you could ship build layers of humus layers and you'd see where they're feeding and stuff just like if you have a look at the time lapses for worm farm feeding uh in here on uh, youtube and um yeah if anyone's watching that they can drop the link down below in the comments area for the time lapses for uh yeah the worms feeding that would be really cool and i'm sure our friend who's got that channel would love that okay i'm imagining this hugs windows of a worm farm that would be so cool i'm imagining this hugs window of a worm farm. But yeah yeah i reckon let's keep going 18 bees have you heard about this terra preta soil from amazon i'm using your worm method in the 27 gallon container and layering i 
I've never touched the soil in nearly two years. Now it's dense and rich. I would say it's probably time to, you know, like, yeah, it's like maybe you can, I don't know how, how you've done the layering or if it's above the ground or whatever, but if it's above, it might be a good time to go and grab some, start using it. Uh, why not? Um, you'd be growing some amazing plants. Like I, I left some of my big worm farms, the big barrel ones. If you haven't seen the video, check out the biggest worm farm ever, EVA at the end. Um, yeah, I got a lot out of that. And, like, I was amazed. Like, when I pulled it up, uh, I just didn't have time to film all this stuff, guys. I'm sorry. But when I pulled it up, there was worms all the way down. Like, we're talking three feet deep into the bottom and through the profile. And it just broke away so good. Man, um, tell you what, I've still, I've still got quite a few left that I can still harvest. So uh, I mix it with the compost that I sell um, to the locals. And here, where are we at? Okay, just going to make sure I'm here. LP, sorry, Marty, that was supposed to say, I imagine this huge window. Yeah, we got that, yeah. <laughs> it would be really cool, like a big window like that sort of thing. And uh, they just need a way to, like, pull the back open so it just pours out so they don't have to get shovels in there and scratch the glass or the plastic or perspex. It's just sort of like pull open on a big hinge and just voom, it just drops out and just fill it up again, create layers of cardboard and newspaper and show all the different food that they eat that can be recycled so people then would understand um, what the worms eat and stuff, you know, um, and and they could even have certain sections showing what they're eating more and where they're travelling to and things. So um, you could have, probably have a light on it like you would maybe in the repti reptile area or something. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be pretty interesting and, and um if you had the big like African night crawlers in there, you could probably see a big one going past sometimes, or you know, maybe the, the cocoons being laid. I think it'd be quite educational. Right, let's go into here, make sure where I'm at. Chris Thomas, yes, I would love to create an exhibit of worms in a smaller tropical building. Would be hard to, to get approved, but would be so cool. Well. It's only you know, it's always worth bringing up. You could make a small model and then show them what the, what it would be like. But that's how I would build. I'd have a glass perspex plastic front, two walls at the side, and then the whole one just fold out the back. Um, so you just everything would just pour out. Uh, it'd be pretty interesting, I think. Let's go here, Andrew Surridge. Hey Marty, new to worm farming. How often should I flush out my worm farm? In the cooler times, very rarely. In the hotter times, you could do a couple of times a week uh, to collect the moisture. I do go over that quite deeply in the members area. So there's a join button uh, below the video somewhere or in one of the links and things. And it's just got these little five-minute videos and it shows you how to make all the own liquids, how to get the levels right, what to feed them, when to feed them to make uh, these sort of worm teas and things. And that's the part of sort of the flushing system. But Really, you just got to be, if it's too cold, you don't want to do it very often. You just want to keep it moist. Uh, if it's too hot, you don't want to do it when the farm's too hot because it steals the oxygen out of the farm. So um, just morning, late afternoon, and, uh, yeah, and, and just sort of keep it nice and moist. 80% moisture is the key. But as I said, the full lessons are in there. If you want to grab hold of it, just jump in, do the lessons. I think it's like $15 or something to do with the lessons, and then you can just finish up. And, uh, yeah, or you can keep supporting the channel if you want to stay in there longer. Okay, where are we at now? 18 bees above the ground. I'm going to plant some veggies starts in next spring. So what I've done, uh, 18 bees, I've got the big barrels like that, and I put compost around the bottom, and then I water the in top, in top of the big worm farm, and the garden around the bottom, everything sumps down and feeds down, and it sends roots down around the bottom of the worm farm and up into it a little bit and what does that, so that feeds that whole system and then you can just keep feeding the worm farm it's very really cool and if you can in summer you just let the tomatoes grow straight over the top and it just creates this shading for it and this you just grab tomato leaves and different stuff and just throw it into the worm farm at the top and it just a bit of coffee grounds and boom uh, you're feeding the whole system and um yeah you just water the worm farm the water goes through and sumps out the plants down below really great system and uh, works a treat for me and then when you finish you just basically chop all the plants off around the bottom of the worm farm all those roots will die inside the the barrel of the worm farm and the worms will go through and eat it all 
and then you can come through um, when it gets cooler and you're not growing around anymore just pull it up uh, harvest it all and you put it out in your garden so it just it's just rolling over and over and over and it just never stops working you just when it warms up again you just start again and go again really really cool and super super fast way and you get not only do you get worms you get compost you get plants and everything works really well together and in the summer, in the cooler times, because they're black, those biggest worm farms ever, you plant up the sides where the sun's coming in the heat and the tomatoes and things will get warmer faster as well uh, because they're sucking the heat off from the black plastic. A and C, not as disturbed by the light. Yeah, so there you go. Um, uh, they, they move a lot slower, though, when they hit the light, but underneath the ground, I believe they'd move quite quickly because when you grab them, they whoop, you know. So, um, yeah, I think that'd be an interesting worm to look at. Get some of those African night crawlers. Yeah, we've got Euros and Africans here. Might have to take a shot with my boss and see what they think. Look, it's always worth a shot. We just we sell it here hard, so it's easy to get excited. Uh, maybe your boss, you know, we'll see, we'll see. But it's always worth a shot, right? 18 bees. Oh, nice. It's funny how worm farming enthusiasts get so excited about this little wormy thing. <laughs> But it does have so many benefits. And, and um, like I said, that garden that I've designed, uh, yeah, just absolutely amazing. I just didn't really have time to film it this year because I just wasn't feeling well. And it just comes across and you're just like in front of the camera and you're not sort of, you know, like doing your thing. And it's just it's quite difficult. You've got to be live and vibrant like today and had a good sleep the night before. So I'm getting on top of my sleep apnea now, just mild sleep apnea, and uh, things are working out much better than what they were. So let's uh, let's have a look what we've got here. So we've had some really great comments uh, so far about it. What I'd like to know where you are now, because we're talking about like worm farming on a comeback, and on a trend. And years ago, it was always the red wiggler this, the tiger worm that. And it was really like later on we started hearing more about the sort of European night crawlers, the African night crawlers, you know, these different types and varieties, blue worms and those type of things. So what I'd like to know is what is the most common compost worm at your place? Do you have one more than the other or do you have a mixture? I have like a mixture of four different types and because I'm like four seasons here but in like extreme seasons in my winter, my Euros, uh, European night crawlers do really well. And then summer with this rain like this, the African night crawlers do really well. And then through sort of like that spring autumn time, my uh, the, the, the tiger worms, you know, the red wigglers, they do really well with the little yellow tails and then really take off. So I get these booms at once at different times, but I've always got them all around. Uh, I just don't see the blue worm uh, as much. There were a lot of them in the hungry bin, but the hungry bin's gone. We solved that on not really using that much because I'm so set on just using the big worm farms ever really uh, at the moment. So I'd love to know what type of worm you're using most dominantly in your farm and then what type of farm you're using in, using them in and how you're getting the results with them. Like what are you feeding them? Um, how often are you feeding them? Are they breeding quite quickly or have they slowed up? And if you've got any questions for me, Happy to go into uh, a Q&A now. And I know the people that are watching the reruns, they love the Q&As as well because they think, oh, you know, it's good to learn this stuff. And they don't think, oh, but I don't have any questions. And then all of a sudden you guys have this awesome question where you might, a lot of people think, oh, no, nah, it's just, you know, everyone will know that. But they, some people come in here are complete beginners and they don't know. So any question is really valuable uh, on this show. So please feel free to fire away if you do have any questions for me and hopefully we'll go past the 750 views that we did uh in the last uh, video remember if you're watching the rerun leave those questions uh below as well and i will get back to you in the next 24 hours uh, to 48 hours if uh the video is getting a bit older right so here we have yes try i agree it's worth a shot cool climate tropical fruits i have the ones that come in the yellow box from Bunnings. I think they're red wigglers. So, yeah, it depends on what guy, like the guy around here that does the Bunnings one. That's Peter from Wormbiz. 
He does the Bunnings ones as well as your worm beers. And I'm going to be seeing Peter soon. We're waiting to do some video content out at his place again, which is really exciting. This is like the worm farming, the guy from the worm farming expert video. Uh, we've been friends for years now, but, you know, we had the drought and the fires and all this stuff going on and everyone's been super busy and he's about an hour and a half drive away. So uh, don't get to see him as much as I would like, but we're definitely organising something soon. But, yeah, he has. when you buy his worms, you get the Euros, you get the Nightcrawlers, you get the Blues and the Reds, and uh, he's been my supplier right from the start. Uh, the best systems mix before varieties. Winter here slowing down some. Yeah, I think that, like I said, for me, the blues, the reds, and the two different night crawlers. I think if you've got a, um, a climate, if you're in a really hot climate, I would just go for the African night crawlers, more so a cooler climate, you know, some reds, blues, and um, the Euros, you know. Uh, the Africans don't like cold weather. They just die, you know. Uh, my blues are best in summer and fall. Yeah, similar to me and with the red wigglers um, as well, but I don't have many blues around uh, at the moment. Uh, they seem to like the farms more than the windrows where my little tiger worms, they just love the windrow when I feed them a lot of uh, cow manure and they get in the bedding, which is basically generally just cow manure and uh, mushroom compost, and they feed on that no problem. They love the cow manure. And it produces a really good uh, nutrient-dense uh, fertiliser for people when they come and buy the compost. I just bag. I don't I don't screen it anymore. It just takes too long to do all that. So I've lost a few customers because it's not screened. But, um, yeah, I don't really need as many as I did before anyway because I was selling out. Do you introduce fungi into your compost? Uh, I have, and I have made, grown my own bred my own fungis in the big worm farms. I think there's some videos on that uh, by using uh, just a small amount of coffee grounds with the cardboard and newspaper and stuff and, you know, like feeding the local ones. But I get them pop around in the grass around the outside of where my windrows are and around the bottom of the big worm farm. So it's naturally occurring in the soil and then moving through uh, the compost that I have as well when it ages a bit. So um, I don't really introduce it much, but I do have some uh, in the fridge. I think it's called White Pointer or White Shark, something like that, and I put that into my uh, hydroponics system outside, the, the big tower there, which is called the Air Garden. If you watch the other videos about the Air Garden, I actually release microbes and fungi into that system, which is really cool. And uh, LP, my blues seem to do well with a wide variety of food scraps. Yeah, so... I believe, yeah, right, so I could see that. And also, you know, like the tigers love the food scraps uh, as well. And I find that the Euros really like the carbon a lot more. The Euros and the and the um, African tigers really feed on a bit of both, you know, the food scraps and the carbons. But that's just from my experience, right, because uh, I'm not being overly tired. I just throw down now they're just sort of feeding on the mushroom compost, whatever's in there, the cow manure, and then when I get a bit of coffee grounds, and then there's a bit of wood chip and leaf mould and things lying around, so they're eating that, and then any scraps that come out of the house, generally they go into the um, the biggest worm farms ever, and then when I'm harvesting the microgreens, there's a whole lot of compost and roots and everything at the bottom, so I'm just throwing that back into the big barrel worm farms. And so, um, yeah, it's the whole thing's just in this recycling loop. So there's plenty of food. Uh, and, and variety as well, even though I'm not really trying so hard to do that. I really enjoy your show and I'm glad you're feeling better. Thanks, uh, David. I really appreciate that. And, um, and and thanks for coming to watch the show and, yeah, being a part of it and checking out my videos and things because it's people like you and everyone that come to things like this that keeps the Marty's Garden alive. If no one was coming to watch, we would just be just straight downhill and I really like to start producing some other type of content outside of worm farming as well. One of the things is, though, is the YouTube algorithm now. Like people say, oh, watch anything you make. But what happens is the YouTube algorithm 
We'll choose what you're watching mostly at that time, and then we'll put that in front of you. Unless you're watching like every one of my videos and you're watching them all the way through, it won't always put them. Even if you subscribe, it won't always put it there in front of you. So um, it's a bit tricky with YouTube these days when you produce something that's not related to what people are watching. So if you, a lot of you guys will watch me for worm farming. I introduce something else. You'd like to see that, but YouTube doesn't show it to you. So that's a bit tricky for me uh, in that regard because I just don't want to create just all worm farming videos these days. Um, I just, you know, I've got some other camera gear for doing short films and, and little documentaries and things like that. So we'll see how things go uh, into the future. And um, I've got some traveling coming up. Uh, as well and I'd like to go and film some other organic farms and some other people in Australia that are doing different things and uh, and also I said with Peter from Wormbiz but they will probably pop up in your feed because um, yeah it's related to worm farming and uh, let's go here to Scott King I keep using the wrong YouTube account. <laughs> uh, Bancy Scotty is also me. Sorry, mate. No, that's okay, man. No worries. Like, uh, but just do whatever you do. But, you know, if it turns up in front of you, uh, then so be it. I'm just saying, like, if I produce something else, it just may not show up um, unless it's got the super thumbnail and then all of a sudden heaps of people like it and watching it and it's turning over, then it'll sort of put it into your suggested and then sort of watch it from there. But, um, yeah, we'll see how things go uh, into the future. But I'd like to keep running the live shows um, about to do with the worm farming. And if people would like to leave a super chat uh, down below there, uh, always uh, it's always good because sometimes I make these videos like this and then um, they only, you only get 2 or $3 for it. And um, sometimes that can be a bit disheartening at times when you're running uh, a business. But we'll just keep rolling along here. On the rocks, in the soil, Michael Godbold. My ANCs are in a bag flow-through. Have added slaters and millipedes to boost fungi in that system. It's an experiment. Yeah, well, the slaters like the dry material up the top, right? And they will help break it down. Just be careful they don't. If it's really dry and they've got the right spots to hide near it, they might take off a bit. But um, you just got to remember that, you know, like worm farming is also a form of composting. So uh yeah i don't freak out if i see slaters and a few different things and sort of that but if you get an overbalance of slaters you know that your worm farms are too dry yeah we got lp i noticed ENCs like carbon a lot too yeah they do the night crawlers they really um they will feed on everything but they seem to be predominantly in my sort of side of things they like the cow manure but um you know there's also carbon in the cow manure so uh, they're probably feeding on that. And here we go. LP, I would love to watch content about you visiting other farmers and how things are done. I know you've got some older interviews. I thought those were cool. Worth a shot to see how it goes. Yeah, I believe so too. Um, I'm doing some filming. I think I'm doing some filming up soon with a guy who makes these big chicken farms. Um, he's got the chicken tractor, I believe, and he doesn't live too far away from me. He comes down, we visit each other every now and again. He creates YouTube content for his chicken tractor. But he's um, more of a business side of things, not more so than a YouTuber. He's selling chicken tractors for people that are doing permaculture farms. They're great systems. Uh, I might be doing some work for him, shooting some film for him, um, so some photos for his website for the sale material. And possibly some behind the scenes videos when he goes to some other farms. And if that happens, I'll ask permission to actually film on the farm as well. I might film a behind the scenes of him filming again and sort of do something like that. I think that would be really cool. And that way we get a sort of a double whammy on the job and uh, he would get a bit of bit of sort of promotion on that. I'd get to see the farm and um, yeah, and sort of film behind the scenes of someone doing our film and then maybe even get to ask the, the farmer some questions uh, as well. So that may happen in the future. Just waiting for some uh, some feedback from that. Now, if you're coming in late into the show and you're just turning up, we were talking about sort of like is worm farming on a comeback? Has it ever been on a trend? And did it ever really die? Well, I don't feel like it really did die at any stage. I think it's just been at a level stage now and hasn't really trended for quite some time. 
But every time I bring up these sort of uh, these type of shows like this, and then people start commenting in the comments box sort of later on the reruns, and then also during the live show, it shows me that it's well and truly alive, and that the people that are into it are really into it, and they just you know the enthusiasm is really quite strong, and people can see uh, the great benefits uh, from it. So unreal. I don't think it's uh, it's dead in any way, and I'm hoping that it will come in and a comeback and that others will see the benefits uh, of the, the worm of what it can do. And uh, yeah. And so like people have got bird aviaries, you know what I mean? Like you could release throw a lot of wood chip down, throw the compost worms in there. Those birds have got their own free food, uh, underground worm farm and the end of the bird aviary could open it up a little bit. The worms could be coming in and out out of that worm farm. The birds have got their own free food when they're going through and picking such as uh, chickens or little um, quail, things like that, if you release them in. So many good things that you can do. Uh, LP Jefferson Hobby Farm. Hey, Marty, I'm new to worm farming. Triple thumbs up. I'm curious on what you think a fair price to sell worm castings and concentrated worm tree. Look, I sell mine for around about a dollar a litre, and that's quite cheap, and I think that's – and it still works out not you know fairly profitable for me and i think the concentrated worm tea i don't really know but i would just have a look at what others are selling in the shelf and then don't go on a price power thing to try and go underneath or to go above just try and sit around that same price as everyone else but differentiate yourself in some way that yours is different to the others and the differential way the way you want to differentiate is to make more benefits so if you can oxygenate it much more than what everyone else does and sell it as a, 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 you know, or you can get a little bit of sort of like you put a bit of white shark fungi sort of stuff and put that in there, you differentiated yourself and put a live fungi into the into the worm tea or something like that. And you only use the tiniest little bit. So, um, yeah, maybe you could do that. And uh, that would be how I would go about it if I was going to be doing uh, a worm tea. I'd be selling a highly oxygenated one where it's poured on site and they turn up and, psh, and pour it and go, right, go take it off and use it. And that's where they get the best results from it. Um, and if you had it like that, you'd fill it up halfway and you'd tell them, shake it all the time. Keep the oxygen in it, shake it, instead of filling it right at the top and all the oxygen disappearing out of it. Hopefully that's giving you some top, t- top tips there. Jefferson Hobby, worm farm. Right, let's move on to the next... Scott King, absolutely. Have you seen recently at Bunnings? They're now selling worm castings by the bag, twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, I've seen it, and I think so. That's round about one dollar a liter. No, they're not thirty liters. I think they're twenty liter bags or twenty five liter bags. So it might be a dollar twenty five a liter, something like that. But yeah, dollar a liter, pretty good value, and you can sell like a big ice cream bin for around about ten dollars, and um. You can scale up quite easily and and make it like that. But I find people like to buy the compost more so and you just mix in and say 10% worm castings into the compost if the worms aren't in there already and sell it that way and uh, you'll sell a lot more. That's what I do. All right. So, yeah, I don't know if they still got it at Bunnings, though. Um, I'm hearing stories that some places have it, some don't. And I've heard some places that they didn't have even any worm farms and any worms at a Bunnings. And that was in the last show when I was talking about is worm farming dying. And that was really sad to hear. But my friend who sells to the Bunnings all up down the coast, Peter from Worm Biz, uh, Permy Pete, he hasn't said anything to me about that. All right. So here we have Cool Climate Tropical Fruits has sent me $4.49 super sticker. Now, um, in the Ecamm Live, we only have a yay and a yay music sound. Don't have that one today, sorry. But thank you so much for the super sticker. Super appreciated. And, uh, yeah, that's just absolutely awesome. And really love, love what you're doing there, mate. Thank you so much. All right. So quick drink of water. We've been going for 48 minutes, 49 minutes. Normally, we don't crank past the hour. If you've got any questions, please feel free to fire away oh i was gonna <laughs> when you look at the look at the opposite side so marty's garden on youtube will answer your questions for you any organic gardening questions any worm farming questions or something that you'd just like to add uh great to hear from you we will finish up on the hour 
All right, Scott King. Yeah, very interesting. I love your oxygenation tips for worm tea. Wondering what would happen if you did aerate before watering. This is really, this is a great question because when you do, when you watch my courses that I teach and just using the little, filling up the little worm farms and creating the thing, I actually talk about pouring the water from bin to bin first, like oxygenating as much, pour it from one bin, drop it into another bin, get it really going and then pour it through your worm farm. And it picks up all the bacteria, good bacteria. It will feed the fungi and the microbes in the system because the oxygen keeps them alive. And also it will grab and pull more nutrient out of the system because the everything's sort of crashing together inside the water. And that's how it sort of operates. If you've ever followed biodynamics, uh, they teach that type of thing right through the system. So, yeah, uh, rainwater that's fallen out of the sky, straight into the worm farms, you just find that that, just uh, so much better than town water. So, yeah, anything to aerate system, little bubbler that you've got running. I have it sometimes. My solar panel bubbler died, but I had a little solar panel, a little bubbler, and I had a um, the bins that you use to brew your uh, beer in and just turning over the whole time. It's costing me nothing. It was a $10 unit to do the little solar thing and then just pouring that through the, the worm farms, and I found that really helped uh, in a lot. And, yeah, it was just awesome. All right, so some great stuff coming through uh, the show, and it's just been unreal. We've got 17 people watching. doesn't really give me a thumbs-up count here. I'd like to know how many thumbs-up are on the show at the moment. If you can let me know in the comments box, that would be really cool uh, because normally we have a bit of a competition to the amount of people watching to the amount of thumbs-up. So, uh, yeah, I'd really love to, to hear that. Uh, Peter Mack, is there much fungal content in fresh castings it just depends on what's in the food that uh, they're eating so the bacteria is basically around the outside of the food and the worms that you know, come along and sort of eat that and if there's any little fungal spores and things then yeah that may get consumed and drop back into the casting and pass back through so i would say that uh very much so um it just depends uh, on what you're doing and generally you find if you're using um, worm farms that are attached to the ground and there's getting some age over time you'll find that come more fungal uh, dominated so scott king said we got 19 david said we've got 19 and then he said it's gone up to 21 <laughs> to 17 <laughs> and we've got another thumbs up from 18 bees well unreal that's really really great to see because um you know Generally, when I run these live shows, I sporadically do them on a, on the weekend, sometimes on a Friday if I've got a bit of free time. So I don't really announce them too much or have them running uh, at the one time. Who knows? We may do uh, into the future, and we may run some from some other places and things. Got myself a nice new iron recently. I can run live shows uh, from this, and I was planning to go overseas in. Um, January, early January over to Southeast Asia, but because of the whole, you know, this whole thing that's been going on for the last two years, it just got too dangerous to travel again and I uh, mightn't be able to get back home. So might have to wait to the middle of the year before I get it back over to Southeast Asia and then we're going to do, we'll do some live shows from the farm. Hopefully we can get a good reception. That would be really cool and show you uh, some different farms and things like that. I've got someone from agriculture who wants to come on from Cebu over in the Philippines and he's like runs the head agricultural department I believe in Cebu in the Philippines and um, he wants to come on the show so it all depends with this software whether I want to pay the 240 bucks for the year I've got to see some value exchange and return um, to make that sort of outlay so uh, yeah we'll see but the basic live shows I can run without dragging things across and, and sort of that type of stuff, unless YouTube comes up with some really cool software uh, over time and then, you know, we can sort of run them out. So we've got, you know, there's a bit over five minutes to go. So if anyone's got any question, would love to hear from that. But I think we could get some pretty cool live shows going, you know, and, and people like the cool climate tropical fruits and others that have sent uh, super chats and super stickers over the years. Um, the time that I'm doing that, it's just really appreciative and it does actually make it more worth my while uh, to do this. 
And I do recommend, actually, if you're into sort of like tropical fruit gardening, head over there and check out uh, his channel uh, over there for sure. So we're getting some thumbs up here from some of my comments and things that I've said, which is really awesome. We've got, you know, about five minutes to go. If you, anyone's got any questions, because generally I'm about 30 seconds behind from what I see here and what you guys see possibly, I don't really know always, so I've got to wait oh, a little bit longer. Uh, I'm not going to ask Ecamm Live to, you, for me to use their software again for another year because I didn't really get them any sales. It wasn't anyone interested in buying the software, so I'd feel like I'd be taking advantage of them. Uh, if I did that, so I would have to buy it or just use the um, the YouTube one. And if any people are happy with just having the just the YouTube one alone, and like from the last video that we watched, that's all I used. I didn't use any other software. Let me know what you think about the interaction. Do you like seeing the slide across text coming across, uh, like we're seeing here? You know, I, I really like that interaction and getting you know bring other people interview across. There are other ones, free ones like OBS and stuff like that that I can use, but geez, there's a learning curve to them um, that, that are free, but they're not as simple and easy as sort of like these ones to sort of just drag and drop and bring them across. So uh, we're getting very close now to uh, to finishing up, guys. It doesn't look like there's any more questions sort of rolling through, but what we normally do at the end is we just say goodbye to our mates and friends and people in here. Uh, you know, like want to say goodbye to anyone or just got some last words that you'd like to say, um, please do so. And if you want anyone that you want to get in touch with anyone in the community to say hello or you want to um, interact with them in some way, uh, you can do that before we sort of shut up here. Um, we've got another super sticker from LP. Thank you very much. Triple, triple, boom, Joseph, but Sam. Gun barrel, thumbs up. Thank you so much. Like I said, it really does help. It's just these small amounts that come through because I get a little check at the end of the month from YouTube. It's not much, but it keeps, it is, it does really help a lot more than what people uh, think. So thank you so much, uh, LP. Really appreciate that, mate. Rah the Rahos, the Rahos, I hope I got that right. Anyone tried meat scraps in the worm farm? Seen Oz video about it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because it just attracts flies and different things. But and I don't know if the compost worms really do eat it, but uh, it's something that I just don't know. It's something that I actually tell people to steer away from because it would be quite difficult um, to do. But yeah, it's a good, it's worth putting out there, and uh, for sure. Okay, on the rocks, it doesn't need to be fancy. Okay, so could possibly just be using the other old one and not dragging them across. People can read it on the right side like what we're doing, and it's more about the interaction, right? Uh, I think just the uh, the interviews, I'm not sure if I can get them across unless YouTube sort of get that happening and we can drag across interviews and things. That would be really cool. So we'll see how things roll out. Yeah, I love seeing what comment you're reading while it's on the screen. Honestly, you're bloody awesome. <laughs> My girlfriend has asked, hope you and your daughter are well. Hey, we're doing okay. Thank you. My daughter's uh, in there. She's probably playing some gaming at the moment. Um, I've got someone coming at 10.30 to pick up six bags of compost, and um, which is in about 15 minutes. And then I'm going to run down the beach and have a look at the ocean and see if it's worth uh, going for a surf. So thanks you so much, uh, Scott King, for that those great comments. I uh, really appreciate it, mate. Cheers, guys. Catch you later. See you later, 18 bees. Bye for now, 18 bees. So put them up there. I'll drag them across as we're heading across in the Ecamm Live. We normally have a bit of music at the end, uh, but you know, like we'll just we'll, we'll follow um, the, the, a similar protocol. Barry, have a good one, mate. Cheers, one to all. Cheers, thank you. Scotty King, bye everyone. See you, mate. Thanks for the kind words again. Play us out of a song. Different software, mate. That's what I'm saying. Like this is a, we're in the um, stream yard. It's, it's nowhere near as good. I'm just on a free trial for the week and seeing what it's like. But um, the ecam we can play you out in the song. And uh, yeah, so I, if I do go back, I think I'll go back to the the ecam one. I like all the sort of more fun things. Have a great day and night. Have a top weekend from Cool Climate Tropical Fruits. You too. Thanks, everyone.
just wonderful. So cool to see everyone here. And, um, you know, it's been really nice interacting with you all. I really do appreciate you all, and thank you so much for coming. Please feel free to share this video out with anyone that you think might like on my channel. So you think they might like my gardening videos, my worm farm videos, organic gardening stuff, and even about my, you know, my, my tower that I've got out there, the air garden. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just stoked to be here. Merry Christmas to you all. I'm pretty sure I'll get a Christmas video out to you. Don't know if I'll have the Santa hat on, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll make some fun of it. And we are about to uh, end the broadcast. LP, good to have you back. And, again, thank you so much for uh, the super chat and super stickers, guys. Really appreciate you. We are on one hour now, and I'm not going to sing the song to go out because I'm losing my voice. And maybe next time we will be back with those options for you. Have a great day. Happy worm farming, and we'll see you in the next video real soon. Bye for now. Next week, mate. Keep an eye out for us. Goodbye. Ciao for now.